Albert Farah starts the Al um, Ayami Bambino final from pole position with William Crombie, James Roots and Chloe McGill behind Darren Dimitrov and Harris Barber start on row number three. Then it's Ollie Liddell and Jack Harney in front of Freddie Baker and Chester Forks, Charlie Page and Sophia Page on row number six. Row seven sees Charlie Holmes and Max Joy with Huxley Dickey and Freddie Purnell with Theo Poiser and Leo Harang on row number nine. Hugo Williams and Max Mikalski start on row number 10 and round out your eye army Bambino grid. Back into the live chat, Melissa Lloyd on saying good luck to Ethan. Well, he's just had a great performance in that one, finishing in ninth, but running as high as fifth. Uh, wrote off his cart yesterday, avoiding an accident. So thank you to all the families involved in making him a makeshift cart to allow him to race today. I think that just shows what the paddock community here in the Bambino Cadet and Junior Kart Championship is like. We spoke about Jam Sport getting a cart together to allow Tyler Davis to go and race. The paddock coming together once again to uh, put something together to allow Ethan Lloyd to go racing and he scores himself a top 10, finishing in P9 in Mighty Bambino. And then uh, as well, we've had good luck coming in from that one from Sydney Nell, from Grandad and Nanny Sandra watching from the side of Loch Ness. So, track appears to be clear. Ayami Bambinos just getting ready to roll for their warm-up lap here at Landau. They'll be uh, going all the way round. They'll stop on the start-finish line. It's a standing start for Ayami Bambino. Bit of a mixed-up grid for this one. Chester Forks will go off the middle of the pack, having scored no points in one of his races as he failed to start. Charlie Page has had a, uh, a troubled day at times with a few spins and some contact as well when he was facing the wrong way earlier in heat number three. So we know he's had some problems. Look for them to try and break through the field early. Chester Forks, though, charged through the field with only uh, half the race, really, in heat number three to try and get through and still managed to make it up into second place. So at the moment we are running roughly around about half an hour behind our schedule after a, a couple of red flag incidents, uh, one this morning in the uh, heats and then that one in that final for Coma C50 Bambino. But after this we've still got Honda Cadet, Junior Rotac and Micro Max to be done so we should be uh, wrapped up nicely for around about half past four, quarter to five just in time for tea which will be uh, pleasing for some people they've got a long way to go uh, back home drivers making it down from Scotland one of them Chloe McGill will go off P4 outside of row number two so engine started all our parent helpers making their way off the circuit here we go then. William Crombie, Albert Farrer on the front row. Farrer off pole position on the right hand side of your screen. Eyes up at the lights. We're away and racing in Ayami Bambino. It's been a good start there from Crombie on the inside. The field's all going to move to the inside. Farrer's going to get squeezed out onto the inside of the track almost. He's down into fourth place. Chloe McGill forces her way through up into third place with. The five of James Roots coming through as well, down the inside. Harsh there for Farrer as he was forced out. Everybody, though, migrated to the inside and he just couldn't get back in. Now he's got some work to do, having started on pole position. Down into P4. Move there down the inside in the background. Didn't look like it was complete, though, as Crombie and Roots now will start to potentially try and move away. Although Roots wants to be at the front of that pull away. He's down the inside of William Crombie. Hard on the brakes they go. Crombie's going to try and get the cut back. But I think James Roots has done just about enough to find a way through there. So it's going to be Roots from Crombie. Then McGill. 
In the background, there's a move down the inside. Looks like it's Charlie Page and Darren Dimitrov battling it out. Could have even been Jack Harney in the 46 trying to find a move through because it was half a second between Page and Dimitrov. So it's Root, Crombie, then McGill and Forks. Your top four, Albert Farah, Harris Barber, Charlie Page, Darren Dimitrov and Jack Harney, Oli Liddell. And then it's going to be Freddie Baker and Theo Poiser rounding out the top 12. Charlie Holmes and Max Mikalski moving up from 20th place up to 14th. Great opening lap for Mikalski in the 93 machine. Field in the background. Farrah's going to try and get down the inside of Chloe McGill and does so. Gill, oh, door was almost open there for Harris Barber to have a nibble down the inside in the 12. Door was closed by Chloe McGill, though. James Roots with the fastest lap. Gap now out to two, point, uh, two tenths of a second between James Roots and William Crombie. Then McGill gets a little bit of snap over here on the exit to Mac Werthers. That'll allow Barber to get a good run out. Trying to get down the inside. Door closed firmly early on by Chloe McGill and she holds on to her position inside the top five. Roots, Crombie and Chester Forks, your top three in this Ayami Bambino final. First three minutes complete. Chester Forks, fastest lap, third place at the moment. Three tenths quicker than William Crombie on that previous lap. Harris Barber still swarming all over the back of Chloe McGill. Trying to help her along at the moment by the look of it. Harris Barber there using the curb on the outside, just pushing Chloe McGill. You saw the bumper there just pop up as uh, Harris Barber pushing along down the straight as there's driver out there onto the grass. That is Harris Barber. See him bouncing up and down, the head almost falling off the shoulders as he bounces up and down on the rumble strip down that back straight. Slots straight back in behind Chloe McGill though. Behind there in the background, Jack Carney with Charlie Page in front. McGill and Barber, Barber then taking a wider line trying to carry more speed into the right. Then it ran that left of the hook. Roots, Crombie, Forks and Farrah still one second splitting the top four. Then it's Chloe McGill and Harris Barber. Barber looking very racy. Looks like he's got the pace. If he can find a way through, as down the inside goes William Crombie on Chester Forks. Looks like he was returning the favour to a move that Forks had done earlier on. Harris Barber needs to find a way past Chloe McGill here. If He's got aspirations of closing in on this top four in front because looks like he's got the pace. He pulls out of the slipstream on Chloe McGill as they head down towards Raymond. Through he goes. And now we'll hopefully for him at least set off in search of the four in front unless he gets embroiled now in a battle between McGill because Charlie Page is there as well. Jack Harney not too far back. Very impressive showing from the 46 running on the black novice plate. At least it's showing it so on the timing down the left side. Pages through down the inside. Harney in the 46 cart right on the back now of this battle in front. So Barber leads from uh, Page and McGill in this second battle really from fifth down into eighth place with Jack Harney. Black traffic in front, the 91 of Hugo Williams. As, uh, they make their way through. Now Chester pa uh, Charlie Page is going to find a way down the inside, as is Jack Harney on Chloe McGill. Page now in front of Harris Barber. Lap traffic in front of them. Albert Farrell with the fastest lap of the race. Harris Barber gets back to the inside of Page. There's some more lap traffic for them to navigate. And Barber returns back to fifth place. Top four now, split by eight tenths of a second, a little over. 
Page back down the inside of Harris Barber. They're going to have to make their mind up soon as to who's going to lead this battle because it could well end up being Jack Harney. If these two keep battling, Harney could uh, have an opportunity. Farrah out of the slipstream, trying to get down the inside of William Crombie. Crombie then will try to get alongside Chester Forks, who is now up into second place. James Root still leading with a gap of four tenths of a second over the line. Farrah, arguably the quickest, having set the fastest lap and closed in again by two and a half tenths of a second, needs to find a way through. Forks defends to the inside. Crombie's going to try and move alongside as they head round that curve. The Lancaster curve down towards Chandler's. Lap traffic in front. Forks finds a way through on uh, Harrison Purnell. I think they are Freddie Purnell, sorry, in the seven. And now Chester Forks has managed to take advantage there and James Roots is on the outside. Forks is down the inside. Will that allow Crombie down the inside as well? Crombie's going to lead this one as Forks goes slightly wide. William Crombie managed to get on the brakes. Farrah's trying to get down the inside of James Roots and it's all change inside the top four. Crombie from Forks, then it's Roots and Farrah. So Crombie makes up two. Roots drops from the lead down into third place, although... Is immediately back into second. We've got a spin. That's Farrah round in the middle of the pack. Rejoins via the grass and he's going to drop down out behind Jack Harney, I think, and maybe even Chloe McGill as well. Although they have managed to move away from McGill, so I think he could be down in seventh place. And Albert Farrah's challenge for the lead gone. And it's down now to, at the moment, a two-cart battle between Crombie and James Roots, Chester Fawkes is about a second behind with four minutes remaining. No reason why he can't close back in here, Chester Fawkes, particularly with the assistance of some lap traffic in front and the two leaders continuing to battle it out as James Roots comes alongside William Crombie. Double apex left down there at 30. More lap traffic in front for the leaders to navigate. Who will this foot favour this time? Managed to move through down the inside. And then Crombie, Crombie and Roots contact. They're both off into the tyre wall for our two leaders. Crombie and Roots navigating the lap traffic. Crombie rejoins James Roots is into the tyre wall and on the outside facing in. He's not going to be rejoining this race anytime soon. And Chester Forks will lead this race now by a considerable margin. Oh, it's not. It's James Roots is still there. So it was, the, it was whoever was, they were lapping is off as well. Roots is still leading. It's Chester Forks. Here's the two. I thought it was the two that were there that they were coming into contact with. And then William Crombie, contact with the lap traffic. He was also a red car. That's why I confused it with James Roots. Roots is still in this race. It's Roots and Chester Forks, but it was William Crombie coming into contact with the lap traffic down there into the right-hander at Chandler's. Looked like the two leaders had taken each other out, but it was just William Crombie. There he is now, back on the uh, back of the 42 of Albert Farrer, who is, himself is recovering from that spin earlier on in the race. Now in front of Freddie Baker and Chloe McGill. So James Roots leads from Chester Forks. Although Forks now closer than what he was a few laps ago. The gap down by another tenth of a second as they meet the lap traffic in the middle of the hook. Not where they want to do it. So you have to find a way through. Minute and 45 remaining. Lapping in the 54s. So may well just about get round. Could be four more laps here, depending on the pace towards the tail end of this one. To the right-hander down at Chandler's, past the lap traffic nice and cleanly. Onto the back straight, down towards Raymond's hairpin. Four tenths was the gap on the previous lap. Can Chester Forks close in on James Roots? Keeping an eye out on the timing. They crossed the line with one minute and six seconds remaining. They are lapping in the 55, so they should have 
enough to get round comfortably for three more laps of action here in the uh, final for Ayami Bambino the gap out almost to six tenths of a second now James Roots turning the screw at the front trying to open up the gap Charlie Page in third he's got about a second or so back to uh, Harris Barber Jack Harney so they're still battling out over fourth and fifth they're uh, Harris Barber and Jack Harney there they are coming through just behind them as well about some four seconds or so behind is Albert Farrer and William Crombie so this is the battle we were talking about between Harris Barber and Jack Harney Harney's now in front of Harris Barber as they go down the back straight towards the right hander at Raymond's into the hairpin Jack Harney is up into fourth place good showing then from Harney in the RCE machine Harris Barber just pushing him down the straight Charlie Page in third place in front able to take that wider line the quicker line round that corner oh no great contact there as well between Charlie Page in third place and the lap traffic in exactly the same place that William Crombie made contact so Charlie Page is going to fall out of third place here potentially as well. We'll see where he is on the track. Leaders are coming through over start finish and Charlie Page is indeed outside the top three now. Harney down the inside of uh, Farrah, uh, sorry, of, of, yeah, of, of Harris Barber. Barber up into third place. Harney, then it's Farrah Crombie and Charlie Page down into seventh place. William Crombie down the inside of Albert Farrer. Just saw that move off camera. A forceful move down the inside at uh, Raymond's. Yellow flag out down at Chandler's. The right-hander, so the field making their way through down the far end of the track there. No overtaking. Final lap board has already been shown to your race leader, James Roots, as he makes his way down the hangar straight for the final time. Round the Raymond's hairpin for James Root. He's going to take victory here at round three of the Bambino Kart Championship at Landau. Takes the chequered flag from Chester Forks in second place. Harris Barber and Jack Harney battling it out over third with Barber taking it by a fraction of a second. Look at that 7.412 to 4.15 between Barber and Harney. Then it's Crombie, Barrett, Page. Baker, McGill, and it's going to be Darren Dimitrov rounding out the top 10 from Oli Liddell, Theo Poiser, Max Mikalski, and Sophia Page in 14th. Holmes, Dickey, Harang, Purnell, and Williams completing your Ayami Bambino final results. And a quick look, see whether we've had any full classifieds in. I think it looks like we have had the uh, Minimax declared for the final as Coma C50 Bambino. So we'll have a quick look at them as we've got a, uh, a Bambino to be recovered from the far end of the circuit. 